Welcome to Live from the Gardens, a Phantomorph podcast about animals and how to be a convincing Animorph. Uh, we'll be talking about the parrot and the hammerhead shark this week, which is the morphs we saw in Animorphs number 15, The Escape, which we talked about last week on the Dork Bajir Chronicles. My name is Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the expert. Oh, God. Tessa, your body sounds like it's dying. I'm Yeah, braiding. your voice has been bad for an entire week, and that is not a good sign. Oh, no. God. But in other news, I can now finally vocalize what the hammerhead shark mating call is like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is cancer to the ears. <laughs> oh, my God. That's why you're glad that they're underwater. Wow, I heard oh. cancer. <laughs> If they were um, on land and shrieking like that, it would be very Okay, big decision. Big decision for this week. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, goo? I, I, I'm getting rid of the points what? entirely. No! Yeah, so, Brayden showed huh? me uh, a lot of emails that Tessa was sending to him about, like, some pretty scary I shit didn't... about... What? Yeah, yeah. I didn't well, show it's you those. So, it's yeah, I know. I, I say show so that it seems more legal. I definitely hacked into your email. Fuck, uh, Brayden, get a better password. I also, <laughs> I also hacked into Tessa's email. Password is the best password. Oh my god! And found a lot of just really threatening nude images of Brayden, and they had that like meme font text on it. That's okay, like you're gonna die if to, you I, don't I, lose. I, I did not ask him to send me those. Okay. Yes, he you sent did. Me those. Oh, I know. He sent me those. They're pretty own. clearly threats. They're pretty clearly like throw the match or I'll kill you yeah. type of memes no. with his naked I was body threatened. on them. I felt threatened and that's why what I emailed fuck? him back. Mikhail, don't get rid of points. Uh, I'm getting rid of points. What? Uh, yeah. Fuck you. Oh, oh, boy. This is like oh, that time God. when we played Risk and you like betrayed oh. us in Act 3. Hey, Brayden, do you want to do out ahead. Brayden, do you want to <laughs> do a Risk Legacy and band, band together and like fuck Mikhail up? Yes, I do want to fuck uh-huh. Mikhail up. Up? <laughs> <laughs> and also doggy style. All right. Because it's a fucking Morris. question. Excuse me. Rubes. Missionary, I'm a Christian man. No, man. Here's all of question. the Animorphs have sex doggy style because <laughs> they're Animorphs. They got to do it. They only like they have sex on in Discovery animal Channel. mode. Oh, for sure. Because their oh, balls yeah. haven't dropped as humans. But then they can't morph into something smaller because the sperm would explode their vaginas. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. Uh. All right. Here's a question about parrots. How come parrots can sort... How come parrots can sort through their food so easily? Wait. You mean the breed of parrot called the Hulkum parrot? Nope. The Hulkum parrot. That's what you said, Mikhail. Hall it's the cum. common English words, how and come. <laughs> Baby, come. All right. How come parents can sort through their food so easily? Brayden, you're up first. All right. Um, parents go to school. Very nice yep. schools. You see, they pull They're themselves up by their bootstraps, unlike those mm-hmm. lazy millennials who think that, who have had everything handed to them on a tray by their parents um fucking parrots learn to count and sort and and shit all on their own their parents toss them in a cage with scraps of meat and they say count that fucking meat count that fucking meat uh no no i don't think they eat meat uh (laughs) no well they just have to count it okay i am gonna interrupt and say (laughs) brayden is wrong (laughs) As we know from okay. the documentary series Had a Full Boyfriend, only mm-hmm. pigeons and doves go to school. A couple other birds, but no parrots. Parrots yeah. do not go to school. Parrots I cannot. That was a documentary. What they can do is um, they hang out with horses. And we know that horses have like favorite foods. Mm-hmm. So parrots just pick up the habit from horses. Boom. Horses and parrots. I don't Friends. know if you're trying um, to tie okay, horses wait, wait, back wait. in because of horse culture. 
Okay, wait, wait. I, I need Forest to give an actual answer. Um, because no, you I, don't, Brayden. There's no points. I, I just, Nothing I just need to. Matters. It's a compulsion. Uh, parrots have very sensitive tongues. You they have Google very that. sensitive, good tongues. I heard your fucking Google fingers. Actually, yeah, I, I was typing up Googly for some fingers. porn. So, I'm on 4chan yeah. now. I'm a little I'm whacking tongues. off to a hot centipede girl. Yep. Um, Sending so the link. You are correct in, in, in a way. They, so, their tongues are very good. So, yeah, yeah, they can manipulate food. That's perfect. Uh, they also have something very interesting, which is touch receptors in their beak... So they can actually feel in oh. their beak as well, not just their tongue. The, the tongue is a big part of it, though, because that's how they manipulate stuff. Ah, right? Brayden! Why did what? you send me this porn? It's not actually I don't porn. need to see this video of you whacking off to the centipede girl porn. It's not a video. I'm trying it's to learn just about a picture of a half-naked centipede camp. woman. He ah. photoshopped a parrot in. Yeah, he's like, it's relevant. I can't Come on, man. Photoshop. This is not the centipede episode. <laughs> Save right. it for book 19. Here's another question for Tessa. Uh, name one... No, here's a better one. Why are parrots hard to track in the wild by, like, environment... Not, like, ecologists or people who track shit in the wild? It's because they don't it so have hard blood. To track parrots? That is a good point. They don't have blood. That is not related... No, but uh, see, it, like, if uh, animals that have blood, blood is really mm -hmm. warm in animals. Except for lizards, but they're not technically Wait, animals. So, like, Just because you're a vampire, it doesn't mean everything has to be related to blood. No, Unless dude, you this can't is actually think outside it. of that When box. you have blood, blood is warm. Of always. Blood is always warm. It's actually yeah, a different kind of substance. It's just, like, g liquid sugar that just flows through, like, cold-blooded creatures. But, um... The warm-blooded ones, you use scanners to find them in the wild. That it, and, it's kind of like a predator, like from the movie Predator situation. Yeah, That's like they have like their cameras the and their infrared, and you can see body temperature. But if you don't have blood, then you don't have a temperature. And that's why parrots just blend into the background. Of because course. they're the exact same temperature as the air. That could not be more accurate. Mm -hmm. Nice. But I do want to hear what Brayden has to say. Okay. In case he has a uh, I mean, but K, but K, so, but K, but animal but, trackers. But, but 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 you said it was my question, so he oh, shouldn't you, uh, be able was, to answer it. It was your question to go first, but I will say this: if I hear those fucking Google fingers one more time, I'm going to come through this voice chat, and rip them right off your hands. What the do fuck it? are you talking about? He you want to share the screen? I'll share the fucking screen. <laughs> I don't think I ever want to share without screen his fingers. With Brayden. Rip his fingers <laughs> off. He won't be able to do it. All right, Brayden, hit me. Hit me. Um, Why are parents so, on the track? Uh, you see, animal trackers are all actually super awkward nerds. So parrots just, like, approach them first and, like, ask them if they want to go to, like, social events. And the trackers just deliberately ignore them and pretend they didn't hear them so that they aren't obligated that is true, although it isn't the main reason. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of weird, like, it's like a boy-girl dance, but it's actually a parrot ecologist dance where they, like, stand on opposite sides of the gym and, like, kind of approach each other awkwardly. Yeah, Anyways, just like my homeschooling. With who? Who's on the I was an ecologist <laughs> when I was nine. Oh, that is true. I've seen your credentials. Yeah. Um, the real answer is parrots actually are... So the main way that we track any animal, but birds especially, is we put a little metal band around their leg, uh, and that oh. they just they chew oh. it right off. Okay, you meant track as in like electronically, like tracking device, like cop. I thought you meant a uh, tracked, and that's why I thought Brayden was right. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, I just meant track, like, so they could track populations and stuff like that. It's like, I don't even know if it's electronic. I think it's just like... They, it's literally just like a number printed on a band kind of thing. Well, that's okay. what they Anyways. gotta do because the parrots don't have blood. They can't just Here, track them another, through their blood. <laughs> here's another question for Brayden. This is yeah. kind of like a broad bird question, but birds of paradise and parrots specifically. Uh, what is a stately walk? Oh, um... Oh, God, why would you ask that? Jesus... 
It's I mean, for it's only birds to parents. know. Okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> so, back in old days, um, uh-huh. they they didn't. Here, while they Brayden thinks think, I'll say it, it's because parrots got big old bowels. <laughs> so they have to like walk with their legs outspread to. Oh yeah, to deal they're with always that. sticking yeah. to the that, inside of their thighs. Yeah. See, <laughs> they the death sentence was legal, but everybody was super, super like squeamish. So mm-hmm. they kept on like sending. Um, they kept on sending people that they sent different states kept on sending people that they had sentenced to the death sentence to other states and they wouldn't feed them or like clothe them or give them anything they just send them to the next state over to say to tell them like uh, i have to be um executed now but then like they would just say like oh god we don't want to execute this guy and fuck they would just keep sending them around until they starved of to death and tired themselves out to death and god why would you make me think of this shit oh you evil sorry fuck he took that away true, points actually. he's obviously it was just a our mad time man. in american history uh, I, I'm off the chain now. Or off the rails? I'm also off the chain, just to be clear for anyone interested. You were on some um, rails and a chain, <laughs> and now <laughs> yeah, none of it matters. I'm off both of them. I'm crazy, but I'm also crazy. In the end, <laughs> in the end of time. Know, that song is really dark now that uh, Chester What's-His-Face died. <laughs> Anyways, you can't even uh, remember still, his name to respect him. Chester Chesterfield. Fuck Chester <laughs> Lincoln Park. His name his last name was Park, Mikhail. Abraham. That's why they named it after him. All right. A stately walk is also called a parade. Also has a bunch of other names. But it's essentially the mating ritual that the males do to attract females. Uh when I googled it, I was almost overwhelmed by a single video from Planet Earth where there's like this blue or black bird, and it kind of like flips its entire body up into like a giant fan around its head. Oh yeah, I'm, just Google it. It's amazing nope. if you haven't. Seen I've it seen that one. It turns into its little black bird turns into a black bird with a disc for a head, just like that one yeah. Jurassic Park dinosaur, and exactly. it's got glowing blue spots. And it's like, it's come good. fuck this. It's very good. Anyone come fuck, come fuck this. this. Come fuck this. <laughs> uh, all right. Who's next? Tessa? Oh, how's yeah. this question for you? How's this, how's, how, try this question on for size. See if it, it's uh, too tight or too loose. Uh, okay. Or some other analogy you, for clothes. This is, what I, this is what I have to do for money now is put on the clothes that Mikhail buys for me. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> parrots are monogamous but uh how do the partners behave outside of mating season no sex no sex uh, i think they only general. have sex during mating season and that's it they can't even look at each other because of the unspeakable yeah. things that they do in that what is two day <laughs> time period you're gonna need to detail that. Yeah. Police. Yeah. 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 I mean, they've got dexterous tongues. Huh. So uh-huh. they use that to <laughs> like it. lick up the cloaca. The thing with parrot tongues, though, is that they're kind of dry, like jelly beans. Yeah. So when they get going and they're Frenching, all you just hear is clack, 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 clack. And um, a thing with parrots is that they have like. A bone. Like, you know how some mammals have, like, a penis bone? Well, parrots just mm-hmm. have cloacas. They have a bone in the cloaca. And as oh, they the eat each other one. out, they like to 69. And it's just clack, 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 clack. And that's why I hate listening to marionettes applause. Because the sound of those wooden hands is just the same as the sound of those little jelly bean tongues hitting that cloaca bone. <laughs> <laughs> Jelly bean tongues. That was a fucking sentence and a half. All right. Clock, 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 clock. Uh, do we go, Brayden? Do you have an answer for that? Um, in the old 1990s, 
um, box, as you'll remember, the television, uh, they used to make TVs with this, this crystal. It was black and it was, it was cold and they didn't even really know where it came from. Like they didn't, nobody ever put them in the TVs. Once, once I looked into one, um, a friend, a friend of mine smashed an old TV and his, his mom grabbed his ear and just kept yanking and screaming at him. And he said, I had to kill it. I had to kill the void. And, and I wondered what he was talking about. So I looked in the TV and I saw that crystal and I touched it. And, um, and, and I, I learned when I would die. Oh, this better pay off for parrots in some way because <laughs> I learned Short answer. when I would die, Mikhail. Parrots don't <laughs> fucking matter. None of this matters. Oh, thank God. I know when Brayden's I'm going to die. Off the cast. Mikhail, uh, is finally that time was uh, at the end of this episode because Mikhail and I killed Brayden. Yep. And we continued and then the podcast the I, with a straw and man. Then I watched, uh, <laughs> and then I watched some Parrot Pete. An old pirate show about a parrot that's a pirate. And the parrot, Pete, had sex with his little jelly bean tongue hitting that cloaca bone. Clack, 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 That's the theme song. Do you guys want to hear about parrot sex? Yeah. Oh. Um. But that ties in with this question. So the parrots, outside of mating season, are essentially married. So they actually follow so they don't each other have sex. everywhere. They don't have sex outside of mating season. That's why it's called mating season. Hey yo. Um, but yeah, but it's also because they- of marriage. Oh, terrible joke about how marriage is bad. <laughs> they uh, just they kidding. Will- I love marriage. Let's oh, go down that. My fiance vein. just gave me some middle finger, rich. and it's like we're not married yet. <laughs> don't get all defensive, you know. All right. That's it. They just follow each other. So even if one of them will join... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So to Mikhail, a married couple is just two people who follow each other? Well, I've been married to a lot of celebrities then. Tessa, I was trying to be poetic. You <laughs> superficial fuck. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Poetry is dead, just like this laugh. <laughs> so the interesting part about this is that they'll join... Other flocks, if they're one of their partner or their partner joins another flock, they'll join together. I thought that was cool. You're right. That was interesting. Oh. You know what else is cool? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know what else is cool? Parrot sex. It's not really cool at all, actually. But uh, the so they'll do the mating dance and whatever, the stately walk and yeah. uh, oh. some other cool stuff. Uh, so my they'll... thing was wrong. About the stately walk? Yeah, yeah, I got the points for it, Brayden. No, you, you were right. It's just it wasn't about parrots. It was about minorities in the United States. <sighs> uh, Oof, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, they'll do one other cool, kind of cool looking thing, which is called eye pinning. Uh, and basically their eyes like shrink so that they're insanely small. I don't know if you guys have ever seen. I recommend Googling eye pinning because it's kind of like it looks like a cartoon where like a cartoon character is very surprised by something and then their eyes like shrink to the Again, size of pins. Again, it sounds like me and many celebrities. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Mikhail, you tricked me. That's not Why? a what parrot's eye. eye. Oh, no. That's two consenting adults fucking. Yeah. Oh, Brayden. No, that was a tab he Why? had already. It's true. Why, Mikhail? Why, Brady? So why? All my fans listening to this who are clearly not Tessa and Brayden. Fucking the Google eye pinning. It's hilarious. Whoa. I got a lot of fans. Uh, yeah. If you're a fan of Mikhail over at Tessa and Brayden, feel free to send them. You know, know what we should do? Death threats. Set up a Twitter poll. Set up a Twitter poll. Which no. house no. is your favorite? It went so bad last time. Yeah, because you did Andalites, Committers oh. of Genocide, versus I promise. Bajir, beautiful people yeah. who don't deserve the wrongs wrought against them. I promised, uh, now that you mentioned Twitter polls, I did promise Adam, our buddy Adam Heap, uh, Heapy Games on YouTube, uh, that I would mention that I had 
started a Twitter poll on our Twitter at Dork Bajir and to settle an argument that I've had with him and a lot of other people about what is the better species, Hork Bajir or Andalite. And it was extremely Hork close. Bajir. Let's get real. It, uh, I, 70-30. Well, no, that's not true. Uh, the It's really closer to like 55-45, but Hork Bajir did win. So Adam... Thank you. You can email me my money now that I've said that. Um, I don't think that's how it works, Mikhail, because you were backing Andalite. So I think I know. you I owe did. money to Adam, <laughs> actually. And also my bookie, because I made a lot yeah. of bets I shouldn't A have. lot of bets. Yeah. Mikhail was uh, riding hard on right, the Andalite train. This. Mikhail always rides hard. Hammerhead Sharks, y'all. Oh, yeah, give me that hammer. All right, Tessa. How do hammerhead sharks treat their babies? Uh, with respect. Okay. Details, please. They know that babies are the future, and they also know that every hammerhead shark uh, baby is born with 10% more brain cells, so that one day um, some... Like not maybe not their children and maybe not their children's children, but someday down the line, hammerhead shark brains will grow too big for their hammerhead bodies, and they will mutate to become the mega brain. Oh, <laughs> so that we can live in a shark universe. I forgot about that joke from last week. I had no idea where you were going with that. Actually, <laughs> Brayden, care to weigh in on the child rearing habits of hammerhead sharks? Okay, well, I don't think it's at all appropriate to talk about the rearing of children. <laughs> Mikhail, yeah, that was really uncomfortable. So the the real answer is hammerhead shark babies are abandoned instantly after they're born. Yeah, And respect. are not looked after and are often eaten. Uh, by parents or other hammerhead sharks. So they'll actually have to stick together in a little group on their own until they can kind of survive without that security. So I'm talking I'm glad. about us respect. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sad, actually. All right, Brayden. Yeah. Why is the belly of a hammerhead shark white instead oh my of the God, kind of Karen. model You can't gray just ask color. why the belly of a hammerhead shark is white. All hey, right, man, if we so don't ask these questions, not everything is a safe it's, space. For uh, mean Girls reference. Play into the fans. Also, <laughs> we have a lot of crossover fans from Mean Girls. That's true. It's kind of weird. I mean, they talked about Animorphs in the movie, so that makes sense. Almost nonstop. It was really uncomfortable, yeah. actually. I can't watch that movie anymore. In the sequel to Mean Girls, one of the characters actually morphed into an animal. <laughs> It's mean Girls too. Yeah. They're even meaner. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it was Brayden to answer. Brayden, hit me. Okay. Um, Hammerhead sharks' bellies turn white because they actually dive so deep in the ocean that they find the sea cows, not manatees. The literal cows under the sea. You see, this is a flat earther podcast. And yeah. um, on the other side of the sea is obviously the other side of the planet. Yeah. Duh. So the, uh. the, the hammerhead sharks just scrape their bellies along um, where gravity is going backwards. And they let the cows spray their undersea milk across their bellies and in return the hammerhead sharks much like uh much like it, it it's a what's it called when it's a symbiotic relationship but like not not um directly interfacing um just it, it's a symbiosis Symbiotic? it's a symbiosis of sorts it's called nature it's nature yeah. and um and then the sharks go home. They come back to us. They don't know if they'll ever see those same cows again. Maybe beautiful. they don't want to. Maybe it's better that way. I'm actually holding back tears. I'm not going to lie. All right. The real answer is uh, bellies of hammerhead sharks are white because, and it's an evolutionary thing, uh, a lot of hammerhead sharks eat from the bottom or at least eat from below them. Mm -hmm. So they hunt and look below them. And when you look 
up and there's sun shining down, a white belly blends in with the light. That's it. Oh, that's very interesting. It is very interesting. Yeah. I thought it was very interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Tessa, this one's for you. Um, why are some hammerhead species considered vulnerable or endangered? Um, their uh, eye stalks aren't as big as the other ones. Some people, like most hammerheads, have really big eye stalks, and that's what gives them the name. Other mm-hmm. hammerheads just look like normal sharks, and they get picked on by the rest of the ocean. So um, they actually isolate themselves in lakes and pools so they don't have to deal with the bullying. It's kind of a big problem. And, of yeah, course, because a shark can't survive in a lake and a pool, oftentimes these sharks will pass on to the other side of the planet and swim with the, with the cows, which is not nearly swim as with good the cows. for their environments. The cows are canon now. That, that's, that's definitely what happened. Uh, interesting fact, actually, I read that hammerhead sharks are extremely hard to keep in captivity. Only a few species have been kept in captivity successfully. Oh, God and damn. even then, it's pretty hard. And, and then the like, animals just tanks. fucked up their like city that had hammerheads successfully in captivity. Well, that's the like, thing. Is like, yes, we're like the only place in the states that successfully has hammerheads in captivity, and the animorphs are like, "Hurt to <laughs> dirt, let me fuck your shit." Also, now you'll never get funding. Oh I yeah, their is plan the is originally to beat the shark into submission. Yeah. And Cassie's like, "You can't beat up a shark," and I'm just like, "Fucking shut up, Cassie." Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can do. No, that. it's too mean. <laughs> Sharks are good. <laughs> Hashtag Anyways, yes, that shark we can. probably died. Because they, like, gave it some emotional scarring and it was already on the edge. Uh, The real answer to that question is... Mine. Hunting. It's just hunting. People actually... It's kind of fucked up. Like, I I recommend you Google it just for, like, your own sake, listeners, so you're informed. But there's a thing called finning, which I'm sure a lot of people know. Oh, yeah. When they chop off the fins. Right, right, right. Yeah, Yeah, like, uh, from thinner. Yeah, it's especially in Asia, uh, what'll happen, or like, I don't want (laughs) to diss Asia, but that's just like the Pacific Rim area is where it happens a lot. Uh, They'll just cut the fins right off the shark and throw the living shark back into the ocean. So that's why they call those robots Jaggers, because they're hunting shark. Exactly why. Yep. There's no other reason why. Anyway, that was dumb. Edit that out. (laughs) Nope, it's in. It's in for sure. I'm Uh, only going to reference it for the rest of the episode. Uh... Anyways, it's really sad. It, look it up. It's like horrifying. There's video of it and stuff, but it's it's upsetting. Um, let's go with one more question. Uh, what is? Oh, here this is this is important. What is the benefit, or what do they think the benefit is for the shape of the hammerhead's head in relation to looking for f- like how the hammerhead hunts essentially? And this is a question for. Uh, Brayden, because Tessa oh, just went. Um, okay, so when a hammerhead is born, its uh, its mother dies. You see, almost instantly. You see, hammerheads mm-hmm. are kept in eggs, but it's a very tight egg, almost skin tight. It's more of an exosuit. It uh, like an exosuit, also is steam powered. It has a large engine on it. So, <laughs> yep, okay. yep, 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 yep. Oh, I'm yeah. listening. Oh, yeah. Sorry, the, in, the the mother is ripped in half by uh, this steam engine, but for the first probably about month of life, as the exoskeleton uh, hammerhead swims around, um, this this gas engine will keep it warm, and also obviously power the laser weapons uh, that the hammerhead's hammer-shaped head is a platform for. It's like an aircraft carrier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, the real answer is, but that is very interesting. Yeah. And I will be drawing quite a bit of bad, low-quality fan art based on that entirely. I really feel like steampunk never really came into its own. I'd like to see yeah. it reborn as sort of a like a bio steampunk. I think that could take it in some real. crazy new direction. 
let's get real. The high point of steampunk, I think widely accepted across the steampunk fandom was um, Wild Wild West, the Will Smith film featuring a giant spider and a scientist in a wheelchair with no legs. Oh, man. I fucking love that guy. (laughs) Anyways, the real answer is, um, so there's two answers that I could find. Well, maybe three answers that were pretty clearly related to this. Uh, The one obvious one is that they can just see a lot better because their eyes are so far apart. Uh, They can see a 360 degree vertical plane, meaning they can see above them and below them simultaneously. Or not, maybe not simultaneously, but like if they move their eyes, they can see above and below them without moving their head. Hey, guess high. what? Guess what? Yeah, it's what you can. If I look up, I can see up without moving my head. Okay, what? That's not true. Yeah, I have no forehead. It goes away oh. because I because <laughs> I'm a vampire now. I just yeah. have like a glass forehead. That is a classic vampire trait. Yeah. Yeah, it's not even a joke. It's a true thing. It's a true uh, fact. One other thing that hammerheads do with their heads is because they hunt uh, on the seafloor often, they'll actually pin down prey while eating it. So, like, they hunt stingrays quite a bit, and they'll push their head down because the stingray's got a lot of surface area, right? They'll pin it down to the ground and then chew the other end. That's or I guess awesome. it's not chewing, it's like tearing it. That's uh, like then, Visser 3's whole thing. Is wow. that? I've seen some horrid shit in my life. It's a really long pause. I thought you were going to say something. It's because he was masturbating furiously. Um... The last thing, which is maybe the coolest thing out of all of this, is so a lot of shark and like frankly a lot of sea animals have something called electroreception, which is basically like you can sense electric fields. And I think I don't know if it's confirmed. I don't know. I'm not a biologist, but like Marco mentions that in the book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, They can sense. Even like there's theories that they can even sense the magnetic fields of the earth and that's how they can like do massive migrations and stuff like that. Oh, but, uh, the yeah, thought I talked is, about that in the book. Yeah. The thought is, I literally that, just said that you numb nut. The thought is that the hammerhead, because it's so what the big, fuck did you say about my nuts? <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said they were numb. numb. Yeah. You numb nut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a classic Eat biting shit. humor. All right, all right. It's, it's late. You ate shit, and that's you why your nuts shit. are numb. You, you already ate shit. shit. Gross your nuts, so they can get numb. Children. Your nuts are already numb. I don't need any nuts. I just look at yours, and that makes me numb. Your Crawling nuts are crawling in my skin. <laughs> You're nutting on your own nuts. Okay. Okay, okay, for fuck's okay. sake, let me finish this thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, because of this electroreception, and because of the way that, you know, reception works in general for that kind of thing, they think that the hammerhead shape, because it's elongated, is actually a better receptor, because oh. it's a longer appendage. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's sense. like an antenna, right? Uh-uh. Very cool stuff, just like hammerhead sex. Which is very violent and angry. Oh, uh, just like Brayden's. Yeah, except this is probably worse. Uh, the male starts the courtship okay. by violently Sounds biting, like violently biting the female until the female agrees to mate. Nice. No, yeah, nice. that sounds like still, still, uh, still on par. All right. Uh, so this is the act itself is the male will insert its um, genital uh-huh. clasper. Oh, into oh my the God. cloaca, and it, that's a great name. So, so it's kind of, kind of like mammal sex, but not really. There's Clasper. a lot of weird organs going on. Anyway, Clasper it's, the friendly ghost. That's right, folks. So the kind of jokes you come to Phantomorphs <laughs> for. Off-topic rhymes. Um, <laughs> it siphons in water, and then it siphons out that water with sperm in it into the cloaca oh, and God. when it's inside the cloaca it kind of like 
expands like an umbrella would expand so that it, it's like stuck in there. But I don't know that's, if Braden's sex is quite like that. That's so fucked up. Sometimes. I'm so glad that's not how humans have sex. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's pretty gross. I couldn't find a whole lot of videos. Hammerheads, like, apparently are hard to research, I guess, because you can't keep them in yeah, captivity. That kind of like, makes sense. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the hypothetical question of the week. Hi. Hi. I can sing it, too. Hi. No, oh, God. Question of the week. Hi. All right, both of you, which animal would you rather be if being that animal meant you had to marry the human version of each other? Huh? Wait, 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 wait. So you have to either be a parrot. Yeah, yeah. Let me explain it. You have to either be a parrot or a hammerhead. And once you become that animal, you have to marry the human version of each other. So that means that if Tessa is to turn into a parrot, she will, as a parrot, will marry Brayden, the human. Oh, and if Brayden no. Turns into a, okay, and here are the details. Mikhail, you, this is a bad question. There's more details. Because retain, Brayden and I are never going to get married. God, no. It's almost like it's hypothetical. This makes me really uncomfortable. I think retain, of Brayden as my brother and my son. Hey, this is not I you. Think of you as my brother and my son. Like, Do I need to change the question because we are not mature? How about right. Brayden? New question. You turn into an animal, and then you marry Mikhail, or you turn Mikhail into an animal and then marry him. Okay. Okay. No. As a no, human. No. No. We're professionals. We're professionals. We can. I'm gonna do my do version. Okay. I, can I would it. turn like, Mikhail into character. a parrot. And marry Parrot Mikhail. No, I like okay. my flipped version. I am going to be a hammerhead so that our marriage can be a truly tragic one where I am stuck beneath the sea. No, no, that's she- a, that was one of the details. So any practical restrictions are not an issue. So if you live in the water, the other person also lives in the water. If you yeah, live so 100 I'm doing years, my flipped the other person also lives in the water. Where I turn Mikhail into a parrot. And then marry him for tax purposes. This is anarchy. <laughs> this is anarchy. You took away points. What did you That's think? That's the opposite I was of anarchy. Do? That's fascism. Yeah. The good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, oh wait. There was know, one note I had here for details. Fun fact about fascism. Fun fact about if you punch. Yeah, yeah. I was recently told by someone that if you punch a fascist, you're now a fascist. Yeah. I so heard in that, that way, too. it's like vampirism. It all ties together. Back all to ties vampirism. together. Uh, I, there was one note here I did put in that says you have to at least have one child uh, in the marriage. Yeah. So I'm going to make Mikhail lay an okay, egg. Okay, cool. I am going to commit suicide. <laughs> that is an option. Because the question is, which animal would you rather be if being that animal meant you had to marry? So if you don't want to be oh. either animal, you don't have to be. No, yeah, that's not... Mikhail, no, that's yeah, a that's huge cop-out. It doesn't have to be awkward. Come on, I, guys. Of course I'd rather be human than either of these animals. Okay. Tessa? All right. Way in. Sorry that I got so turn intense, Mikhail Tessa. I into a parrot. <laughs> okay. Mikhail, okay, Brayden, this is the thing. I'm Marco, and you're Rachel, and Mikhail Excuse is just trying you? to push us together. Yeah, you know how oh. you like fly off the rails and you get really aggressive and I'm like hilarious and I have problems with my parents? I think there's one logical step missing there. And that's that you're hilarious. <laughs> 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 okay. Next week we'll be talking about Animorphs number 16, The Warning. And then after that, We will talk about rhinos, probably, because that's on the cover of that book. Until then, you can find more of our stuff on our podcast page at collectivelegacy.org, as well as some hilarious memes on Twitter, and a lot of them on Facebook. The Facebook 
page is growing significantly, actually. So feel free to join the conversation. Oh, God, I felt horrible saying that. Also, we have Instagram and Tumblr. Uh, remember to smash those subscribe buttons or, I don't know, you get violently bitten by a hammerhead shark. Hot. Or I might marry you, and I, which I guess is the worst thing in the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> for the Phantomorphs, I've been Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the anarchist. And I'm Brayden. Uh, no, you didn't earn it today. Oh my god. <laughs> Ass. This has been Live from the Gardens, a Phantomorph podcast about how to be a convincing Animorph. Oh! <laughs> If you'd like to correct or clarify any of the poorly researched animal facts in this episode of Live from the Gardens, feel free to contact us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook by searching for Phantomorphs, the Dork Bajir Chronicles. And remember, stay safe, stay hidden. Welcome to Roland Solo. My character is Snick. Snick the Kobold Slayer. She is a gnome ranger. The gnome ranger. <laughs> I just realized that. Roland Solo is a multi-character story that takes place in Aland, a country full of betrayal, hope, loss, and destiny. Ooh. Ooh. Our characters are ferocious, strong, and smart. But are they able to withstand the story that is playing out before them? Whoa, 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 whoa. wait a second. And I'm um, a dirty hippie. Does he have a bow? I thought he had a bow. I forget. I think he had a bow. Plot relevant mammoths. <laughs> Can I roll for plot, Tessa? This is gonna sound bonkers. And will the DM be able to make this story make sense? Yeah, so yeah. New episodes every second Friday on CollectiveLegacy.org or wherever you download podcasts. Brought to you by Collective Legacy, a podcast network.